see what they have to say. We could analyze the desk, too. It's really nice. Desk. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. I, I mean, I have to echo their sentiments there, which is that we had much, much, much higher expectations of TSM coming into this tournament, and they just simply are not delivering. Yeah, I especially had much higher expectations of TSM, <laughs> apparently, uh, because that wasn't a great showing. And a lot of it has to go, like, the obvious one is, like, throw Dyrus under the bus, but Turtle and Lost Boy had a very poor showing in that game. Collectively, they were caught out in the jungle on the bottom side of the map specifically on two, three occasions. I understand that Lost Boy was trying to sa save Santorin, who was also just doing his best, I'm going to call it his best wolf impersonation, and just roaming around the map randomly, but that was a very sloppy game. Yeah, I feel like Santorin and Lust Boy's synergy that game was really off. Santorin was walking up to lanterns that were about uh, five feet away from him, or five Teemos away. He was body slamming into the lantern for the gank, and the gank was so telegraphed. When you throw a lantern behind you in the middle of the lane and then walk forward and flash forward, you know it's coming. A, like, that was so predictable. A ridiculous. curious thing about this game for me, as an avid Rek'Sai player, is the fact that they pick Rek'Sai so much, and why does Rek'Sai work against these tank junglers? Well, she has innate sustain from her passive, which Gragas does have that, but it's gated by mana. He has to chug abilities so that his passive goes off and he can heal himself. Rek'Sai does not. She just burrows back. No mana can constantly be ganking. None rely on any abilities, and she can clear faster than most junglers, allowing her to get there before anybody else with more creative paths. For instance, a Gragas can take the same route that a Rek'Sai can, but he has to use the Body Slam, which is a main engage tool, so he has to take more conventional paths. You see Bangi ganking left, right, and center. He can gank whenever he wants. It's the strength of the champion, and it's played perfectly. And, you know, usually the games that he has on Rek'Sai that he runs away with it, the early games, it's a complete washout, and we saw that here. Yeah, I think he did whatever he wanted in this game, and I think there were just a lot of executional mistakes. Uh, we see a top lane, Dyrus getting ganked early, what a great gank by Bengi, and also just getting baited in really, really hard, and um, that just snowballs over to the bottom side of the map. I think that uh, Bjergsen actually did really well in the mid lane, and the, after 6, he was like 15, 20 CS ahead, and then there was just a lot of questionable play from TSM. Yeah, and I think that's twice that TSM shown that if they get behind in the early game, they make questionable decisions, because this is twice their stall has been completely fine. You're running... Alistair is a fantastic diver, so that is probably the one saving grace of SKT's comp, but they cannot siege. They have an Urgot, they have Cassiopeia, they have Nah. And then everyone else is melee, so the Rek'Sai and the Alistair. So they can dive extremely well if they're ahead. But you have Gragas, you have Ziggs on the other side. They should have been able to stall that out if it was only Dyrus that fell behind. That's why I'm a little bit more upset with the bottom side of the map, because that game was salvageable until they started invading and doing really crazy things. I want to jump in here real quick. We've thrown a decent amount of shade towards TSM for their performance so far. I do want to hop over to SKT because although, you know, they may not have been up against the best performance of TSM, they did play it well in that they camped that top lane on Dyrus and then they systematically dismantled all of TSM. I mean, their pressure played a big role in TSM playing incorrect, making incorrect decisions. My favorite part about the, the entire game, I'd have to say, is the draft where it began with the first pick Urga and the Lulu ban. You know, SKT is known for playing a lot of Lulu and so is TSM. And we were thinking to ourselves, oh, TSM has to ban Lulu. You can't give this champion away to Faker. What do they do? They ban it themselves. So you, when you think you have them figured out, nah, they just throw something else at you. But another interesting thing was that they locked in the Urga first and then followed it up with the Rek'Sai Nar. So triple physical composition already, that's a very obvious Urga to the AD carry position. Mm. The only possible pick that you can make to have your team comp make any sense would be a Corky and an Annie, any magic damage, but TSM had locked in the Hecarim and the Gragas. Full on tack, you're gonna get outscaled. I think TSM could have taken advantage of the situation, recognize it's 100% the Urga going bottom lane, pick a stronger lane into the Urga, and try to punish it a little bit more than what they did. Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree. I think the only other thing you can point out is that they just rotate around the map much quicker than anyone. Like, their, their calls, especially into the top lane, 
like you saw Dyrus trying to dirty farm. It was a little bit over aggressive, but like straight away, as soon as they see it, they make three members automatically respond. As soon as TSM had maybe caught Faker out in the jungle, all of a sudden the Alistair's there, another two members are collapsing from the bottom. These guys are so on point with how they move around the map. And we touch on it a lot, but they always take the inside lane. Their vision is always set up that they are the ones that can safely move through every jungle path that they want to. And TSM always has to walk around the outside, meaning that either they cut through and get cut off like Turtle was, or everyone's just gonna be too late. Well, and there you have it. Those are our eight games of the day. Let's take a quick look at the group stage standings. In first place, after a perfect day one performance, is the LCK's SK Telecom T1. Behind them in second is the LMS's AHQ Esports. Tied in the number three spot at one and one is China's Edward Gaming and Europe's Fnatic. And rounding out the table in fifth and sixth are the NALCS's Team Solo Mid and international wildcard Besiktas Esports Club. So, gentlemen, I mean, this was not what we had expected. If you had asked us to, you know, detail what the standings at the end of the day would be, it wasn't this. No, not at all. Uh, the fact that TSM came out with this type of performance is really a little disheartening, especially on home turf as well. That was something that I was not expecting. That's the biggest upset here today, at least for me. I didn't vote for him, though. So. <laughs> Zero three on the day. Mighty impressive there, Spawn. It's really impressive to get them right, but to get them all wrong. <laughs> it's just as impressive, it, yeah. really. The reverse profit <laughs> coming. <over. laughs> I feel like that I think AHQ had a really strong showing. I really like their team, uh, the style that they are playing. They're playing really aggressive. We saw a lot of kills and we saw a lot of crisp executions in those skirmishes. And that was something, you know, I was looking forward in the beginning of the day where I say, I want to see those surprises. We saw Cassiopeia top lane counter pick. Those was also a really great surprise. And I think everybody is like stepping up their game in strategical play from the teams we didn't expect would perform so well. What made me the happiest the entire day was that last game, the first minute, as a jungler, Bangi got a four-man oh, leash yeah. on a red buff. <laughs> Cassiopeia Catch throws it. a Q out, Alistar helps it out, Urga throws some more help. That's so nice. That's how we, he was able to get the gank on top. So guys, when you're playing solo queue, give your jungler a big fat lead. Yeah, who, who would have guessed it? it? The four junglers on the desk are all very excited it, it by It throws that. off people's timers. They're like, he'll gank here at like three minutes, 10 seconds. It's like, no, he's three, three seconds early. And that actually really does affect things. All right, well, that's our eight games of today. We've got a bunch more games tomorrow. When we come back, the matches will be starting off with China's Edward Gaming versus Europe's Fnatic. After that, Team Solo Mid will battle AHQ, followed by Edward Gaming returning to the Rift against Besiktas Esports Club. And in game four, it's SK Telecom T1 versus Fnatic. Now, gentlemen, a lot of games on the docket for tomorrow. What are we looking forward to most? TSM versus AHQ, because TSM has to win that game to make it out of the, of the round robin and into the brackets. Because if they lose that one, the rest of the games that they have against EDG just don't even matter. First game of the day, Fnatic EDG, you know, <laughs> I chime in. I, well, we can both be excited for it, but Absolutely. I mean, both of these teams had a great performance and then a disappointing one. So, which one? Which of these teams is actually the good one and the bad one? Well, let's not say that teams, these two teams, are good or bad, but which one is better compared to the other? I'm going full holo here. <laughs> I, I believe in Huni, and uh, I believe that you know they have what it takes to beat EDG. They have a kind of similar style, so I also expect a lot of the skirmishes and. You know, that's just, you know, my kind of team fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think when you put the first two games together, you get like the whole picture and that's what we're looking for here. I think that we're in a position now where we can kind of piece together exactly how it's going to work out, but TSM really needs to bounce back. I'm actually looking forward to their game because if they can't piece it together, then there's a lot of questions to ask about the NA scene right now. <laughs> yep, I'm, I'm right there on that train with you guys. TSM versus AHQ tomorrow going to be very exciting with a lot on the line. So I expect them all to come out swinging. That does it for day one of the Midseason Invitational. So for myself, the casters, and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. I just can't wait to kind of reevaluate.